I want to start off this video with saying I love Skid Row. I think their first three albums are classic hard rock, heavy metal records. More so the first two, but I still love Subhuman Race as well. I got into the band around 2010 when I was in high school, so yeah, that makes me a little bit younger than most of the band's fan base. I was only four when the original band broke up in 1996, so I never got to experience the group in its original form. When I was first discovering Skid Row, using the magic of the internet of course, I quickly learned the band's history and realized although the band had reformed in 1999, 96 eh, kinda may as well have been the end of the band entirely. Some people disagree, but Skid Row without Sebastian Bach has never made sense to me. When I read recently they had gotten yet another new lead singer, I thought, wow, this band can't get any more fucked. Like, it's embarrassing. I had heard that they were planning on a new album with then-current lead singer ZP Thart, which I really couldn't have given a fuck about. And then, once again, out of the blue, they've parted ways with the singer just to announce the new one the same day. So I thought, fuck this, it's getting silly at this point. But I did listen to the new song. And I watched the new lead singer perform. And you know what? I changed my mind. But before we get into that, let's quickly go over a little bit of the history of the different singers of Skid Row. Now, original singer Sebastian Bach, you know, the guy who sings all the good songs that made the band famous, he fronts the band from 1986 to 1996. Between 1989, when the debut album is released, and 1996, the band sells over 20 million albums. Since then, from 96 to 2022, they sold about 20 albums. About 20 single albums. The band reformed in 1999 with new singer Johnny Solinger. Original drummer Rob Afuso does not return either, but Skid Row has even more drummers than singers, so that would have to be an entirely different, longer, and more boring video. Anyway, Solinger fronts the band from 99 all the way to 2015. In that time, they released two full albums and a two-part EP, which was supposed to be a trilogy of EPs, but before they could finish, they fired Solinger and plans changed. Now, I have nothing against Johnny Solinger. I think he's a good singer, but I just don't get it. He just doesn't seem to fit with the rest of the band. I mean, I never saw Skid Row with Challenger live, but I've seen videos, and he can sing the Bach songs. But when he does, it just seems like he's trying to emulate Sebastian Bach's vocal style, and obviously it's not as good as the real deal. And then compared with his new recordings with Skid Row, which are stylistically so different, it's just confusing. I mean, let's talk about the Solinger albums. Can we talk about the Solinger albums? The band releases their first studio effort with Solinger, Thick Skin, in 2003. Thick Skin is Skid Row's attempt to have a modern rock sound. Modern for 2003, mind you. And this is not a new thing for veteran bands. A lot of hard rock and metal bands from the 80s seem to go this route, trying to kind of figure out where to go after the decline of the genre in the 90s. So I can't really fault them. But it's just not Skid Row at the end of the day. There's a difference between updating your sound as the years go by, as they successfully did on Subhuman Race in my opinion, and trying to fit in with what's currently popular. There's a couple good songs on the album, for sure. I mean, the lead single, Ghost, I enjoy a lot, actually. But it's like a post-grunge song, and that's fine, but it's not what Skid Row is. When Solinger sang live, he would try to capture the essence of the old Skid Row, but on the new songs, the style is completely different. It's not his fault, but it just seems like a clash of old and new. That's why it just didn't work for me. Overall, Thick Skin is pretty weak, in my opinion. So, you know, what does a band do after that? Well, they put their nose to the grindstone and try again. And they followed up with another full-length album in 2006. Revolutions Per Minute. And boy, oh boy, what a fucking sneaker this one is makes Thick Skin look like a masterpiece. And the band is apparently even embarrassed by it because it's not on Spotify, available on iTunes, or Apple Music. You can listen to it on YouTube, so it's not completely purged from existence, but I wouldn't recommend that to anyone. Six years later, in 2013, Skid Row announces they will be releasing a trilogy of EPs. United World Rebellion Chapter 1 drops the same year, with Chapter 2 following in 2014. Now, these are vast improvements over their previous two efforts. It's straightforward hard rock, and there are definitely some good songs on here. Each part has seven tracks. On each, there are five originals and two covers. In my opinion, they should have just cut the four covers, which are fine, but nothing really to write home about, and combine the original tracks on one tight, 
solid 10 track LP. As it is, I prefer the the first chapter personally. I don't know what the popular opinion is, but I think therein lies the issue. There is no popular opinion because who gives a fuck about these EPs? Like in concerts, what do they play? You know, it's 90% material from the original albums with Bach, and yeah, maybe a couple Solander songs here and there, but I'll get back to that. 2015 rolls along, and instead of releasing Chapter 3 of the Who Gives a Shit trilogy, they fire Solinger's ass out of the blue and announce his replacement the same day. According to guitarist Dave Snake Sabo and bassist Rachel Boland, it was only hours after they fired their singer of 15 years over the fucking phone before announcing Tony Harnell as his replacement. Now who the fuck is Tony Harnell? I didn't know at the time, but he's the ex-lead singer of TNT, a Norwegian hair metal band. This guy, yeah. Now, I don't know dick about TNT, but this was another head-scratcher. Instead of replacing Solander with someone younger and prettier, they go with another veteran from an obscure 80s band, no less. Even Rachel Boland said in an interview that he wasn't a fan of TNT's music. To me, it kind of seems like moving backwards. But to convince the fans that it was a good decision, they released a re-recorded version of 18 and Life with Harnell on vocals. I fucking hate when bands do this. I don't think classics should ever be re-recorded. There's just no point. Why take your biggest hit and redo it? No one's going to prefer it, even if it's good. In no universe do people hear 18 in life and say, This is okay, but I prefer the 2015 version with fucking Tony Harnell singing. No, never. Absolutely never. And this is nothing against Harnell, either. He's undeniably a great singer. It's just, is he the right singer for Skid Row? And the answer was apparently no, because he quit the band only eight months later via social media. Yeah, he made a Facebook post informing people he quit before telling the band themselves. An embarrassing public faux pas for sure. Now, singerless, guess what happens? Well, fans clamor for the return of Sebastian Bach. But Snake and Rachel are adamant they won't reunite with their original vocalist because fuck the fans, right? And I don't want to keep coming off as a Bach fanboy, but Skid Row is falling deeper and deeper into obscurity with every new singer they recruit. The thing that can bring them back into the public eye, make them a lot more money, and most importantly make the fans happy is to bring back Bach. And I'm not going to get into the whole history of Bach not getting along with the rest of the band. The point is, they don't like him. Bach has said he was open to a reunion on multiple occasions, and at one point there were even conversations between the two parties before it quickly fell apart. Now, Snake, Bolin, and other original guitarist, Scotty Hill, have all explained on many occasions why they won't reunite with Bach, and the gist of it is they don't want to have to deal with a bunch of bullshit at this point in their lives. And I get that. I don't know Sebastian Bach personally, but if you see him in interviews and such, and for me, the big one was watching the MTV reality show Supergroup, which Bach was a big part of, it really gives you a peek into his personality. And yeah, he comes off as obnoxious, loud, and a bit of a diva. Couple that with a volatile history, I can understand why Skid Row doesn't want him back. But the thing is, no matter where they go or what they do, Bach will always be the guy. Like I said earlier, what songs did they play live? Which songs did they still play on rock radio to this day? Which albums sold millions of copies? They seem to constantly want to run away from the fact that they had something special with Bach. That's the band everyone fell in love with. That's the band that gave them their money and their career. The only reason why they could drag the Skid Row name through the mud for so many years is because they had the foundation of the band they built with Bach. The thing that rubs me the wrong way is that Bolin and Sabo continually say that how they don't want to work with someone they don't like. And it's like, I'm sorry, but there's plenty of your fan base that most definitely work jobs they don't necessarily like with people they fucking despise. And they do it because they have to. They do it to make ends meet and support their families. And sometimes they use that hard-earned money to buy your albums and see your shows. And here these two are saying, You know how hard it will be to go out every single night and play songs that we wrote to fans that love us and make tons of money when you don't like your singer? Fuck off. You get to play in a rock and roll band for a living. And to the people that made that possible, they say, we don't care what you want. Get it together. Take separate buses. Use separate dressing rooms. Figure it out. Plenty of bands with fractured relationships have gotten back together and made it work. Van Halen, Motley Crue, Guns N' Roses, the fucking Eagles, the list goes on. It's just funny to me that the band seems to want to deny that it's even possible. I know a fan base can't control everything, but to ignore the people who bought your albums and pay to see your shows 
it just seems, I don't know, kind of backwards. But I digress. Back to the history lesson. In 2016, ZP Thart of the band Dragon Force fills the lead vocal spot for live shows and is announced a full-fledged member in 2017. Now, Dragon Force is another band I don't really know anything about. Uh, the song Through the Fire and Flames was in Guitar Hero 3, but I couldn't name you another song. But okay, whatever, I guess. He's fine. He can sing fine. I guess it's fine. Skid Row continues to play shows with Thart and plans on recording with him as well, with an album due in 2022. Now, at this point, I could give a fuck about Skid Row. I read rock news sites, so I've kept up with what's going on with the band with a type of bemused, morbid curiosity. But did I care about a new album with ZP Thart? Not really. And then it happened again. March 2022, Skid Row announces a new fucking singer. Eric Gronwell, as they depart with ZP Thart. When I first heard this, I laughed out loud. I was like, no way, this is so embarrassing. I figured if Skid Row wasn't finished before, they certainly are now. Who's going to keep caring about this band for all this time and all these lineup changes? But then I did listen to the new single, The Gang's All Here, from the upcoming album with the same name, featuring the new vocalist. At first, I wasn't blown away, but I found myself revisiting it. It grew on me a lot. It's a grower. The closer I listened to it, the more it felt like a real Skid Row song. True who they are. And the new singer, he's fucking good, dude. They did what they should have done when they split with Solinger. They got a young gun who loves Skid Row and has massive pipes. And then, of course, I saw the clips of him when this first shows with the band. And yeah, he nails it. He sings the classics like they should be sung, and it's clear he's psyched to be there. Who the fuck is Eric Gronwell, anyway? What? You've never heard of Heat? Well, he was a winner of Sweden's version of American Idol. In fact, he auditioned on the show singing 18 in Life, a song by his favorite band. He's not the baddest rock and roll ruffian around, and I don't know what's going on with that hat. There may need to be some rethinking on that piece, but the guy certainly has the passion and the ability. According to Sabo and Bolin, he had been on their radar for a while, and as they started to drift apart from ZP Thart, they decided to pull the plug on him and tap Cronwell. Which is, I get it, it's a business, but it's kind of crazy how these guys just hire another singer and then tell the old singer, yeah, we got a new guy, so you're out. It's a little like telling someone in a long-term relationship that they've been seeing another person and they want to break up, but doing it multiple times to multiple people. But whatever, what do I know? I'm only a scientist. So this was a pretty long-winded video just to say, I counted a skid row out, but they might actually be back, kind of, to an extent. I think aside from getting Bach, this was the right move. I know I've sounded like a purist or a hater, but I do believe it's possible for bands to continue on without their original lead singer. I just didn't think Skid Row was doing it the right way until now. It reminds me a lot of the situation with the Stone Temple Pilots. Granted, their original singer, Scott Weiland, is sadly no longer with us, so a reunion for them is actually impossible. But in 2017, STP got Jeff Gutt. A contestant on the X Factor, young guy, lots of energy, loves Stone Temple Pilots, does justice to the old material. I saw them live a couple years back myself, and I thought it was really cool. Queensryche is another band that comes to mind as well. They can't get along with original singer Jeff Tate, so they got Todd Latour in 2012, and have been going strong since. People seem to dig it. You can even throw Accept into that ring for that matter. But anyway... I was really prepared to close the door on Skid Row, but I'm actually excited for the new record. It comes out in October, which is kind of a while away, but I guess they had to put out the lead single before their first shows with Gronwell. I assume they'll pull out another song or two before it's released, but we'll see. If anyone gives a shit about this video, I'll do a review of it. I even pre-ordered the album, so you've won this round, Skid Row. You've got my money. The only thing now is to see how the album actually sounds in full when it's released and whether Gronwell can keep his position in the band without feeling the wrath of Bolin and Sabo. But I am hopeful, for the first time ever, for the band, and I do hope it works out. What do you guys think of Eric Gronwell? Was I wrong about the Johnny Solinger albums? Are TNT and Dragon Force real bands? Was I too mean to Skid Row in this video? Sound off! Skid Row's new album, The Gang's All Here, arrives on October 14th.